Steve coming to you for our weekly pre-recorded Bible study. Again, I'm Father Steve, the vicar of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, which is located at 22 Cumberland Street in Clear Spring, Maryland, and also I'm the interim rector at St. Thomas Episcopal Parish at 2 East High Street in Hancock, Maryland. So I'm serving two Episcopal churches, which I really feel blessed to be doing and called into doing this type of ministry to serve two Episcopal churches. Uh, our Bible study uh, for today, our pre-recorded Bible study, we're studying uh, Epiphany 5, the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And the readings uh, for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany will be on Sunday, uh, February the 5th, 2023. Now the readings for uh, Epiphany 5 uh, are uh, Isaiah 58, 1 through 12, if you want to write these down, Isaiah uh, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Now I'll give you the psalm. We won't do, do the psalm in our, our Bible study, but the psalm uh, for Epiphany 5 is Psalm uh, 112, 112. That's Psalm 112. Then we move on to our um, New Testament um, epistle, uh, Paul's first letter to Corinthians. So it's 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 2 verses 1 through 16. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 through 16. And then our gospel uh, will be the gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 20. That's the gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 20. So again, the way this works, uh, this is the pre-recorded uh, Bible study at St. Andrews. Uh, actually, I'm in the recording studio at St. Andrews Episcopal Church in Clear Spring. Uh, our in-person Bible study uh, we have on Fridays. That's at 11 a.m. Uh, in person uh, on Fridays at 11 a.m. And that's preceded by uh, the Office of Morning Prayer uh, inside the church at St. Andrews at 10 a.m. So, um, and again, if this is the first time or if you need a refresher, how you can do this uh, pre-recorded Bible study uh, if you want it with a group or, or an individual. Um, I will pause a little bit and the way you do that is hit that little um, upside down equal sign or as one of our elementary school teachers here tells her kindergarten kids, pre-kindergarten, uh, um, hit the number 11 and that will pause it and then once you process um, or do the Bible study or whatever the question is, then you can hit the arrow and move on to uh, the next question. So anyway, so we're going to look at um, Isaiah uh, 58, 1 through 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, and Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. So just a little bit of background about what we're talking about. In Isaiah, the background in these verses that we're going to look at Isaiah, God explained that he did not want fasting. Now, I say this uh, with tongue in cheek because one of the requirements of in, in the Episcopal tradition, Anchor tradition, we do fast. And what are the two major fasting days? Well, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But you'll understand a little bit more what we mean by um, not fasting, but it's the way they were doing it. So anyway, so in these verses from Isaiah, God explained that he did not want fasting. He wanted kindness and justice. Kindness and justice. God considered fasting that he observed to be ineffective, hypocritical, and self-serving. One's relationship with others is a stronger indication of one's relationship with God. So if you remember when we get to Ash Wednesday in one of the, the readings it says, you know, when you pray, you know, and, and do all these things, don't look dismal, wash your face, you know, your Father in Heaven knows your prayers. But when you do fast, do, it's, it's more personal, but you don't need to make a big issue with um, going out there and looking all distraught. And so we'll talk about that. Then we move on to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. So when we look at our 1 Corinthians, um, remember we're going to skip the psalm in these pre-recorded um, Bible studies. Paul wrote his letter to the Christian church in Corinth, which was a Greek city, to answer questions of doctrinal belief and ethics. He wanted the Christians in Corinth to unite and give up the divisions that were developing in the congregations. He wanted to those divisions, which oh, we never see in the church, right? Uh, so anyway, that's what uh, 1 Corinthians is about. So then we get into Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, which we'll look at. So these verses are part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus presented right after he described the Beatitudes, 
which we had last week, Matthew 5, 3 through 12. That was our, remember that, our gospel last week? So Jesus gave advice on Christian conduct. In addition, Jesus claimed that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets, not to abolish them. Okay? So that's a little bit of background on our readings. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at um, a few of these questions. And remember, I'll throw these questions out to you, and I will pause. Uh, so it gives you a chance to hit that upside down equal sign or that number 11, and then you can move on with your um, after you had a chance to either write the questions down. If you're in a group, individual, had a chance to, to look it up, think about the questions, then to move on. So we're going to take a look at Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Okay. All right, so the first question from Isaiah, what did God find annoying about the house of Jacob? Excuse me, and that's Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 12. What did God find annoying about the house of Jacob? And that's from Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 2. Okay. So our second question from, from my reading from Isaiah what was wrong with their method of fasting? What was wrong with their method of fasting? Isaiah 58, verses 3 through 5. Isaiah 58, verses 3 through 5. What was wrong with their method of fasting? Okay. Moving on to the third question from our reading from Isaiah. What did God tell his people regarding the purpose of fasting? What did God tell his people regarding the purpose of fasting. What was the reason for their fasting? And this is Isaiah 58, 6-7. What was God telling the purpose of their fasting was? Isaiah 58, verses 6-7. through Okay, our fourth question from Isaiah. We have five of them total. Our fourth question from Isaiah, what are the results of thoughtful fasting? What are the results of thoughtful fasting? That's from Isaiah 58, chapter, uh, verses 8 through 12. What are the thoughts, results? What are the results of thoughtful fasting? And we see that in Isaiah 58, verses 8 through 12. Good, following along. Okay. And this is what I just mentioned about fasting we see in the Book of Common Prayer. So our, our fifth question from Isaiah, where do we hear about fasting besides the requirement for Ash Wednesday and Good Friday? Now you see these requirements in the Book of Common Prayer, page 17. So my question is, where do we hear about fasting besides the requirement for Ash Wednesday and Good Friday? And that, uh, there's, you see these requirements in the Book of Common Prayer, page 17. So the question to help you with that is to look at one of the pointed readings for Ash Wednesday from the Book of Common Prayer. Look at one of the pointed readings and you can go to page 264 to find this answer. Look at one of the pointed readings for Ash Wednesday from the Book of Common Prayer, our service for Ash Wednesday, page 264, which talks about fasting. And you'll see that in Matthew chapter 6, 1 through 6, and verses 16 through 21. Remember, this is our reading uh, on Ash Wednesday. So, um, Look at this, look at the requirement in the Episcopal and Anglican tradition where we require to fast. Remember, two fasting days, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. And then, the refresher is to look at the service of Ash Wednesday from the Book of Common Prayer, page 264, and look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and 6, verses 16 to 21. Okay? Got that? Moving along? Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go to the questions from Paul's letter to 1 Corinthians. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. That's our uh, reading for Epiphany 5. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. Okay, now the first question from 1 Corinthians, when, fall, when Paul first came to Corinth, what technique the technique that he used to communicate with the new Christians. So when Paul first came to Corinth, what Corinth, what technique did he use to communicate with the new Christians? And we'll look at that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 
You can find the answer to that question on, on uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Okay, we doing okay? Our second question from 1 Corinthians. What was Paul's reason for using this technique? What was Paul's reason for using this technique? And that's from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. What was Paul's reason for using this technique? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. We doing good. We follow along. Knowing how to hit that uh, up down equal sign or that number eleven, and that arrow to move on. Okay. So now we're going to come to question three from First Corinthians. What did Paul teach regarding wisdom? What did Paul teach regarding wisdom? And that's from First Corinthians, chapter two, verses six through eight. What did Paul teach regarding wisdom? First Corinthians, chapter two, verses six through eight. We good? Okay. All right. Fourth question from 1 Corinthians. What was the result of not understanding this wisdom? So what was the result of not understanding this wisdom? And that is verse 8. So what was the result of not understanding this wisdom? From 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. What was the result of not understanding this wisdom? Are we good? Following along? Okay. So let's look at the fifth question from 1 Corinthians, our reading from 1 Corinthians. Describe what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. Describe what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us, and this is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Describe what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. What has the Holy Spirit revealed to us? Okay. Few more questions from 1 Corinthians. Okay, our sixth question. What happens to us when we receive God's Spirit? What happens to us when we receive God's Spirit? And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. What happens to us when we receive God's Spirit? And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. What happens to us? Okay. And I think this is the last question from 1 Corinthians, our reading. What is the key lesson you have learned from these verses? So we're looking at 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 16. What is the key lesson you have learned from these verses from 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. What is the key lesson you have learned from these verses? Okay. So now we're going to go on to Matthew. We have four questions. Only four questions from the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. The first question. What does the lesson of salt teach you from Matthew 5.13? What does the lesson of salt teach you? And that's from Matthew um, chapter 5, verse 13. We good? All right, everybody following along there? Okay. Second question for Matthew. How can you apply Jesus' teachings about light. How can you apply Jesus' teachings about light? And that's in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. How can you apply Jesus' teachings about light? We good? And that was uh, the last one was from Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Okay, our third question. What did Jesus say to clear up misunderstandings about his purpose in coming to earth? What did Jesus say to clear up the misunderstandings about his purpose in coming to earth? And we see that from Matthew chapter 5, 17 to 18. What did Jesus say to clear up the misunderstandings about his purpose in coming to earth? 
And this can generate a lot of discussion. Some people want to take the very legalistic approach to this, but there's more to that, a lot more than the legalistic approach to this. We good? Okay, the last question for Matthew. What was the warning in verses 19 and 20? And from, you know, fifth chapter of Matthew, what was the warning in verses 19 and 20? We good? Okay. So there, so there we have it. Those are the, the pre-Bible um, study questions for Epiphany 5. Um, and those are the appointed readings for Sunday, February the 5th, 2023. So there you have your questions. And uh, I hope you like this format. And, and you can leave a comment. Um, I think I have it open to leave a comment on uh, the Facebook uh, part of it. So you can leave a comment. Uh, not so much answering the questions. Um, but how you, if you like the way this is presented to you in this format and this coming from the recording studio at uh, St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Clear Spring. So anyway, um, we're moving into the weekend, we're moving into Epiphany 5. Remember this, that every person you see and all the eyes you'll see is someone that God loves. God bless. <laughs>